Twitter there you're watching Biz World. The government has no objection for the Employees Provident Fund, EPF's proposal on mandatory monthly withdrawals scheme. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, however, said it needs to be done within EPF's capacity, including the contributors' conference of having little savings. Itu masih di peringkat uh, akhir, uh, saya tidak ada peratan, dia ikut berupayaan KWSP seperti mereka tersebut. Saya dengar ucapan Datuk Si Amir Hamzah seperti tadi, ada beberapa kekangan, terutama di kalangan yang simpanan yang terlalu kecil. It was met after launching the EPF iAccount application at the 2023 International Social Wellbeing Conference. EPF on Wednesday said it did not yet rule out the possibility of making conditional or periodic withdrawals for retirees aged 55 and above mandatory for new contributors in the future. And on his Facebook post, Datuk Sri Anwar stressed that 96% of Japanese companies intend to remain in Malaysia, with half of them wanting to expand their business in the country. The Prime Minister said this figure was based on a survey by the Japan External Trade Organization, JETRO, adding that the rate of expansion was higher than the ASEAN average and the second highest in the region. Japan is one of Malaysia's most important and fourth largest trading partner with 181.5 billion ringgit trade volume in 2022. It is also listed as one of the main sources of foreign direct investment coming into Malaysia in manufacturing projects. Bank Negara Monetary Policy, Policy Committee MPC has decided to maintain the overnight policy rate OPR at 3%. In a statement, the central bank said at the current OPR level, the monetary policy stance is slightly accommodative and remains supportive of the economy. The MPC also continued to see limited risks of future financial imbalances. It also remained vigilant to, vigilant to ongoing developments and will continue to monitor incoming data to inform the assessment on the outlook of domestic inflation and growth. Bank Negara also said that the global economy continues to expand, driven by resilient domestic demand, supported by strong labour market conditions. Global growth, however, remains weighed down by persistent core inflation and higher interest rates. The local crude palm oil is expected to trade between 3,800 and 4,000 ringgit per ton in the second half of this year. According to the Malaysian Palm Oil Board's chairman, Dr. Muhammad Helmi Uthman Basha, the price range is reasonable and appropriate for producers and consumers. Faktor luaran ini uh, banyak dia tergantung juga dengan uh, import duty ataupun export duty, import duty daripada India, for example. Ya, dia tergantung juga uh, polisi uh, yang dikeluarkan oleh kerajaan Indonesia ya, Dia bagi ekspor ke tidak ya, Dia tergantung juga uh, masalah uh, peperangan di Ukraine dengan dengan uh, Russia ya, Sebab itu ya, uh, pengeluar yang terbesar untuk sunflower, uh, minyak uh, bunga matahari ya, So banyak faktor-faktor yang di bawah kontrol kita lah ya, di bawah. Since the past few weeks, the price of palm oil started to see an upward trend compared to around 3,300 ringgit a few months ago. He added that the impact on the currency exchange rate is very minimal, even though the ringgit is currently trading low compared to the US dollar. The price is also based on demand and supply, apart from the factor of reduced soybean oil production. In terms of exports, palm oil will be the third largest export by generating an export value return of 137.8 billion ringgit in 2022. And that's all the time we have for Biz World this time around. I'm Nadia Azmi. Thanks for investing your time with us.